Hello, I'm Michael. So I'm currently in Philippines. Check it out. This is where I'm at. A uh, five-star resort called the Moven Pick. And today I want to talk about why you should become a data analyst in 2024, 2025, or in the near future. So I've worked in data the last seven-ish years full-time. I've been wearing definitely hats of a data analyst at times, and I've worked with a ton of data analysts over that time. And I think there's a lot of good reasons to become a data analyst. So number one is it is a growing field. Being a data analyst in the near future, the demand for that, in my opinion, is not to go down. If anything, it's only gonna go up and go up at a higher rate. Listings for data analysts rose about 30% year over year. I would believe that trend will continue. And the reason why I think it's gonna continue is because data is everywhere now. Now, if companies want to measure how they're doing, measure how they're improving efficiencies, measure how their forecast, measure how any of their important metrics are trending over time, you need data analysts to do this. And I believe the future of understanding how companies are doing and diving more into you know key specific metrics for companies will only become more important now a lot of people might come back and rebut and say that you know this is something that AI is gonna automate in the near future and well I do think that that is a concern at some point I think the AI automating data analysts will be more of a longer term thing to worry about rather than a short term thing to worry about I think there's a lot more short term positions and roles that AI can really automate and replace such as you know customer service product recommendations even in some pure engineering like CSS engineering styling and all that jazz due to the nature of a lot of data analytic work being ad hoc I do believe that there's always be a demand for data analysts to set up reports and even if it becomes more of an AI automated process integrated into the data analyst flow you will need people who understand how these AI data analyst tools work so you can control them tweak them and optimize them over time so I don't think that AI in the near future will fully automate out data analytics my next little point that I want to harp on is that data analysts they get paid relatively good wages comparison to a lot of other jobs so for example I'm mostly familiar with the US market and the Vietnamese market given that I work a lot in Vietnam Vietnam engineers Vietnam data analysts but specifically this video is gonna be catered towards the US market and I believe on average the average data analyst salary now on the low end is around $70,000. I mean, it certainly depends on your skill set because the data analyst skill set can be very vague. When I think of a data analyst, to me, it's somebody who is very good at SQL, potentially has Python skill sets, would be very good with Excel, but would be familiar also with Tableau visualization tools and knowing the full process of how to create insightful understandings from the data that a company has via using SQL combined with visualization tools to be able to answer kind of complex business questions. So like when I think of data analyst, that's what I'm thinking of. Some people think data analysts might just be more on the Excel side of things. I think it's a lot more than that. Like when I'm referring to data analysts and the salaries I'm entering now, are for more of what I would say is, is like a data analyst is a skill set that comprises a bunch of coding skills with mathematics combined with general business logic, which can change depending on the industry. But it's more than just Excel. It's Excel plus SQL, a visualization tool with a knack for being able to answer complex business questions and systematically create dynamic visualizations that can portray the performance of different KPIs at a business over time. Whoever you talk to, you're gonna have slightly different answers on what a data analyst is from their point of view, but this is what I'm generally referring to. So for that type of skill set, you can be looking at an average salary of about $80,000 now. US wise definitely will vary based off of you know what city you're in if you're remote or not but I believe the average right now is like 76 plus that you have benefits and all that so like let's round it up to 80 that is by far far and large above the average wage for an individual person in America I think the average wage is I think it's 46 on average or the median don't know exactly off the top of my head but basically data analyst is almost double of what the median is and of course this will fluctuate based off of your skill set exactly are you more senior do you have more experience or not your education and really where you're at but overall on average being a data analyst will most likely earn you a lot more money than an average job in america tech salaries are not going up at the rate that they once were you know, during the middle 2010s, but tech salaries are still quite a bit higher than the average salary in America. And if you're looking for a lucrative opportunity and you're, you know, oriented, you have a knack for doing data analytics type tasks, I would highly recommend you consider becoming a data analyst because if you like solving problems, doing math, you can get well paid for those services. It does take a little bit of time to find a good gig sometimes. Like for example, right now is not a great hiring market in the US job market right now for a bunch of different reasons. I'm not getting into that in this video, but overall I am still very bullish on data analysts as a career. And I think that trend of data analysts being paid higher than the average wage in America will continue and stay consistent at the very least, if not grow slightly. 
over time. And the reason why I think it might grow over time is because the work that you do as a data analyst can be super important to the company overall. So for example, if you are able to solve very complex questions or identify inefficiencies in different companies' workflows, you can end up saving the company millions of dollars over time. And in doing so, you can sometimes win and curry good favor with some of the executive team or the higher ups, which can then make yourself known in the company as like, hey, this person is a problem solver. They're good to have around, which makes you overall more valuable to the company and less likely to get laid off when layoffs do come. More so than just being paid well, if you do your job well, you can make good connections with higher ups in the company, which can help accelerate your career and it can help you seem more important to the company. So if layoffs ever do come around, you may not be the first one on the chopping block, which is always a good thing in my opinion. The next point is as a data analyst, you can really make the most of remote work if you can find a good situation for that. So for example, check out where I'm at. Now I am on vacation, but if I want to, I could work remote right here from this island paradise in the Philippines. So a benefit of being a data analyst is most of your job, if not all of it, is on the computer, so you don't need to be handling physical hardware, generally speaking. So you can find gigs, you can find jobs that are remote and allow you to be location independent, which I'm big on location independence and financial independence in a different manner that's outside the scope of this video. More videos like that might be coming in the future. But overall, you can find a gig where you don't have to sit in the office every day if your employer allows. I know a lot of employers are trying to get back to the office, which I totally understand, don't necessarily agree with, but I understand the reason for doing so. But there's so many employers out there that will allow you to work from anywhere in the world or at the very least anywhere in the US of A. So that way you don't have to you know, live in New York City and pay New York City rents if you don't want to. You could live in Nebraska or you could live out at a resort in the Philippines and just kind of work remote for a bit. That's another benefit of, I think, tech in general, software engineering. Very much applies to data analysts. You are location independent. You do just need to find either clients or job that allows you to be location independent because I would not recommend if you're working as a data analyst and then saying, you know, lying to your employer, I would definitely not recommend that. It's much, much better to be upfront and honest about what your intentions are. And if it works, great. If not, then maybe you need to look for a different opportunity. A big benefit for me in data, in data in general, you don't need to be in an office. There are a lot of benefits to being in an office, but say you value traveling, living elsewhere, say you have family elsewhere, you don't need to be there if you can find a client or a job that allows you to be remote. Another big one why I like the data field and a benefit to being a data analyst overall. And then the last one that really comes to mind is a lot of people who do data, who become data analysts, tend to be people who like math, who like continuous learning, like getting new skills, doing new things and or learning new things in the data field, especially right now, because tech is accelerating so much with AI. If you like learning, the data analyst field and job will keep you on your toes. There are so many softwares to learn. You know, I mentioned it's a lot more than just Excel, SQL, Python, you know, new softwares are always being invented to support data analysts, such as different visualization tools. You know, Tableau is very, very, very popular. Now, Microsoft BI was popular too, kind of going down. One I'm very familiar with is called Sigma Computing. It's like a Tableau competitor, very, very popular. A lot of different tools to help support the data analyst role are coming out year after year because companies see that there's such an opportunity to develop products to assist data analysts in their job because data and optimizing and understanding your data for companies is now more important than it has ever been. One other reason to become a data analyst is because kind of be on a continuous learning pattern. You know, if you're good at your job, you might find yourself working and assisting in the finance department for doing forecasts or the executive department for, you know, helping to build some visualizations for board reports or the operations department for trying to optimize certain metrics to minimize costs. And even the marketing department. If you get good at what your core job is, you have the opportunity to learn so many different functions because data Data kind of supports every part of an organization. I'm not sure if that last one made sense. I'm a little bit out of breath. I've been training water now for, <laughs> I think the last 20 to 25 minutes. And so we'll wrap it up there. Overall, I highly recommend becoming a data analyst in 2024, 2025, and in the near future. This is the first video on this channel. I'm Michael. I do a lot of data things. I love data. And I'm gonna make a lot more videos about doing data, learning data, how to get a career in data, how to become a data engineer, data analyst, data scientist. Those videos will come out at different days, not when I'm treading water in the middle, in the ocean, in the Philippines. So hey, I hope you like this video. It just kind of just came on a whim, a random idea I was thinking of today, so I thought, hey, might as well go film it. And that's it, and I will see you in the next one.